Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography by Peter Reed Miller. I'm here today with Jordan Naholoa Murph, my good friend, a really good photographer, a former assistant in tech at Sports Illustrated. And today, Jordan and I are going to talk about setting up a remote and some of the things you should think about when you do it. We'll be right back. So, Jordan, what are some of the things you should think about when you set up a remote? There's a lot of things to think about. As we <laughs> yeah, we both know. We both know. A lot of things. Um, safety is always a priority, yes, no matter yes, what. It yes. always comes back to safety. I'm going to keep saying that over and over. And you know, can't say problem. it enough. Can't say it enough. Safety, safety, safety. But really, you know, a lot of young photographers and new photographers to remote photography get really hung up on the technology part of it, you know, the, the, you know, it's cool tech stuff, you know, the magic radios, radios and wires and magic arms and all that. But people get a real kick out yeah. of it, but people get really hung up on it. Um, you know, you still got to make a good picture with it. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. It's not just for the, you know, just to put a remote camera up. If that was the point, then it'd be a big pain in the butt. It wouldn't be worth it because it's a lot of work. You really want to make a special picture out of it. And that goes back to, you know, safety is always important, but preparation, preparation, preparation of having a picture in mind yeah. when you set the camera up, yeah. you know, pre-visualization, because when you set this camera up, the lights in the building might be off, the tarps, and uh you know the batting cage might be up on, on the baseball. field yeah you know you know you, you just never know you know you have to you have to pre-visualize you know what you want to make you need to pre-frame it you need to have an idea of where the yeah athletes it's, it's got to be in your head it's got to be in your head because you're not going to be able to see it when you're actually setting up the camera exactly so that's where that pre-visualization and really thinking ahead and wanting to make a picture maybe it's an inspiration you've seen from you know, a photographer you admire on their website or in a book of, you know, wanting to retry something and have an idea, or it could be something original. And, but you need to have that picture in mind that you want to yeah. make ahead yeah, of time when exactly. you set it up. Um, you know, and that goes, you know, from the idea of what moment you're trying to capture, but also just the framing, because you, you gotta, you know, you gotta set your camera and it's going to be fixed. It's not going to be moving around. Yeah, you, you can't to, change it. It's yeah. going to be somewhere where you're not going to be. That's the whole point of doing it, another angle. And you will rarely be able to access it during the game to change anything. Yeah, so that pre-visualization is really important in, in going, you know, hitting that nail again about preparation of, you know, knowing that it's going to work and having confidence in it from being prepared of, you know, making sure your batteries are charged, that, you know, double and triple check. You have a card in the camera. Card in the camera, batteries in there, all those sorts of things that have been tested out and, and you know, worked out those problems ahead of time. That's really important. Right. But having that picture you want to make you know, in your mind, pre-visualize is really important. And today we're gonna, you know, we're gonna set up a, uh, you know, set, we can imagine this could be a, a, a home plate action camera, you know, maybe behind home plate or inside or outside first or third this base. This is a very basic setup. Yeah. This is this will serve you in any sort of situation that, that you're in. Yeah, because this the same, you know, technical setup, we, we, you know, I can name a bunch of stuff right now. Use it for a camera behind home base, uh, for a play at home. It'd be for a, a first or third base camera. It'd be for a, a looser overhead at baseball to get a, a shot of a home plate for maybe a reaction or a play at the plate from overhead. Yeah. At basketball, it'd be a corner cam. It could be an overhead from a smaller gym. There's, right. The same setup would be used for gymnastics. Gymnastic, a, a different angle on the on the bar, the beam, or the the uh, uneven. So many different opportunities to use this same setup. So that's what we're going to teach you right now. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to start with, you know, what cam we're going to use. You know, if we're going to make a picture behind home plate, we want to get, you know, maybe the catcher trying to tag, um, runner coming down third, yeah. sliding into home. You know, 
7200 is, is a really good all around yeah. lens for anything like that. If you're going, even if you're going overhead at a smaller gym, uh, that's again a, a really good lens. If you're going overhead in a big arena, Staples Center, whatever, you need a longer lens. But we're going to do it the 7200 today. It's a good all around choice for a lot of remote angles. Yeah, and so. Going back to, we're to, I'm going to keep saying the same word, safety, safety, safety. The very first thing, you know, besides knowing that there's a battery and a card in the camera, is safety. And what we like to do is use these very, I don't even know what you call them, but zip they're, tie, but I'm not sure how strong they are, but they're hundreds of pounds. These are the kind that cops use for handcuffs. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is the greatest thing to use to secure a safety cable to a camera. Um, and it's really easy to take the straps out, out of the camera and you just feed these through. And this is gonna create a mounting point for a safety cable. Really simple, so now. Whole camera can be supported by that. If yeah. it falls, it's gonna be held up. Yeah. So what we do is you put these on, you get one on both sides, And you can get these safety cable, or I'm sorry, these zip ties at any large, uh, or any, any hardware store, really. Yeah. Um, you can you get them at an electronic store. You can get them on Amazon. The bigger and heavier, the better. Um, just as long as they fit through, you know, right. strap lugs and get cameras thick. and lenses, yeah. yeah. And this is a small lens. We're not gonna worry about it on this lens this small because of the weight, but a larger lens, like a 400 millimeter, or 300 to eight, um, those lenses need more safeties put on those directly, but those also have lugs directly. They will have a lug for that where you can where you can put it on. This lens does not directly in the lens barrel, but we don't need to worry about that with something this small, thankfully. So from there, the other tool we're going to use is, or very ne necessary item on all these. The weatherman. All these sorts of uh, uh, remote opportunities are yeah, multi-tool weatherman. Yep. And a roll of gaff tape. These two things are, you know, essential. You're gonna need to use this to tape down your lenses and, you know, flag things and keep things in place in your wiring. And this is gonna be to, you know, cut things and to tighten stuff down. So yep. first thing we're gonna cut is we're gonna cut the uh, ends off of our right our zips, make it nice and clean. And that's a, you know, that's the thing that you know, this is a personal preference of mine is, I think you know me very well. Yeah, yeah, I do. I really like having clean remotes. Things should, you know, some photographers have arms going everywhere and things, you know, just really messy. My personal mentality is that you keep things really clean and pretty You make things look good because if there's ever a problem, if you have a really nice clean looking rig. Don't blame somebody else who's got the sloppy rig. Exactly. Yeah. And so taking the extra moments to make things clean and make it look good like this, it goes a long way yeah, in the end. Yeah. So from okay. there, we're showing what we're gonna mount with. So right. You wanna this talk is, about the ball head and the clamp? Yeah, this is a ball head. This actually is a slick ball head. They're a little hard to, they're, they're not produced anymore, but you can find them on uh, eBay. There are a lot of great ball heads out there. Uh, really right stuff. Um, who else uh, makes a good ball head? Uh, Manfrotto does uh, really great stuff. It makes you know great products. Kirk uh, makes great things as well. Yeah, a lot of different products you can get yeah. out there. Or you can look for one of these on on eBay. These which are they... the best of the best. So if you can find them on eBay or an old camera store or used pile, grab yeah. it. They're yeah. they're special. They're special. Yeah. What do you got there? So this is a standard um, super clamp. It's also called, called a Mafer clamp. Um, yeah. A lot of different companies make them. Bogan Manfrotto it makes the standard super clamp that you know everyone is familiar with. Right, right. It goes, you know, it kind of does everything. You know, it's used ninety five percent of the time. There's a lot of other yeah. specialty clamps for different mm -hmm. different purposes, right. as you know. But you know, the super clamp does most of the jobs really well. So, and then from there, on the super clamp, you got to put you know in the mounting spigot. You got to put something to you know to attach the ball head to the super clamp with. Right so we there. use these these studs right here, which are machine specialty, uh, especially for the super clamp with a three eighths inch spigot. So between the quarter twenty and the three eighths, you want to use a three eighths. It's strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for for the slick. I mean, depending on what what size uh, hole you've got in your your, your head, but it's going to be the uh, the bigger one. The three eighths. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing about super clamps is they're 
Also, there are other uh, fittings you can put on them to mount flash heads, mm -hmm. to mount different things. So they're very versatile. They're a really good investment when you're building your kit for remotes and, and any kind of photography. Absolutely. I, you know, I inherited a lot of my super clamps from Peter and John W. McDonough, you know, over the years, and I still use them. They're might be as old as I am at this yeah. point, but they're, you know, they keep working until, you know, until you retire them. So uh, from there, we're gonna right, get that guy gonna, together. We're gonna put the head on this clamp. So with this rig, what we're gonna do, you know, since this camera body, you know, obviously has a mounting point in the bottom, which right here, but the lens also has a mounting point. And since it's a larger lens, a little bit heavier, you know, you don't want your frame to move, you know, that right. going back to pre-visualization and pre-visualization and, you know, having a picture you want to make in your mind, once you set it, you don't want it to move. You don't want, if that's your picture right there, that's yeah, not you your don't picture. Want it to droop. So that's why we're going to use two mounting points today. And our second mounting point that we're going to use, our second support mechanism is going to be a standard Manfrotto magic arm. It's, it's technically the variable friction arm. Variable friction arm, That's yeah. the one you want. You know, this is, I know I get a lot of questions from other photographers about this and assistance of, you know, just starting out of, you know, thinking of the magic arm has a lever, but it's, it's, it's tension. So once yeah. it, as soon as it gets hit, um, it just moves a quarter inch and the whole thing comes apart. Right. It just right. falls apart. But a variable friction arm, you get to tighten down. Yeah. So that's not moving now. And you can keep tightening it to make it tighter. And yeah. So that's something to remember, the variable friction arm. Get the, get the knob, not the lever. Knob, not the lever, yeah. So that, these are the two. Uh, and again, a super today. clamp. Uh, going, it's going in the same socket that the uh, we did here. Um, it's the same super clamp. Yeah. So a lot of these, uh, a lot of grip uh, grip tools are going to use the same uh, components. Same components. Like you know, you could stick this on that, and you know, you just got to make sure that the spigots are the same. But uh, yeah, so this works to go super clamp, and then on the other end of the variable friction arm is a camera platform. They sell these kits together from any of the, you know. Right, B&H, uh, yeah. Adorama, Amazon, yes. yeah, all of above. They sell these kits together, but this is called a camera platform. This is what's gonna screw into the camera. Right. So right. from there, let's uh, okay. start mounting. All right, yeah, so, um, I'll let you put that on the camera. In general, the way I like to do this is build as much as you can before you start putting it on something. And Especially if you're doing an overhead where you're hanging out right. over. You, and you, that's, you know, and, and just to hit on that, when you're in a, uh, a situation where safe, safety is a factor, when you, you know, if you're, sit, if you're down, if this rail's down on the ground, like, you know, maybe a small college or high school stadium, mm -hmm. you don't need to worry that much about dropping on somebody because you're kneeling on the ground. That's not yeah, gonna be yeah. much of a situation, but when you're overhead, at a major stadium or railing, you know, at any stadium, safety is a major concern. And at that point, before I'd even go out over the railing to put something on, we'd be putting safety on. cables on. Safety cable. And I think that's a good opportunity to talk about the safety cables real quick. The kind we use and why. And um, these are rubberized steel braided cables. They're custom made, but these things could probably hold up a thousand pounds. Oh yeah, so I, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't, and I don't know, but it's a lot. It could hold up more than this camera. And with these steel carabiners as well, you know, you gotta make sure it's safe. And starting from the very beginning, before you even get out there. Put your safety cable on. Put the safety cable on the rig. And a lot of times what I would do when I was up in catwalks, I put it around my neck. So this can't, this can't go anywhere at this yeah. point. It's yeah. safe. Yeah. Then we just get to our apparatus and we start, this is where we want to put it. This is where we put it. And if you happen to be mounting on a square rail, there is a little insert in the jaw of the super clamp that flattens it out so it mounts on a square rail. So from here, let's just, let's Do see that this is our frame. Okay. How's that? What do you think, Peter? I like it. I like okay. it. So we lock this guy down. That's what we want our frame to be, and now this guy's locked. Well, from there, while you're in the catwalk or any unsafe situation, you never take more than, you always have two hands on the rig at all times. And that's where 
something's loose. Oh, it's probably that. So tightening, making sure everything's tight. You don't want it to move on you. So we probably need to move that, re-aim the camera a little bit. Okay, right. we will. But, uh, and at this point, if things move a little bit, that's okay. You know, you're just wanting to get it safe and that's yeah. the most important. Now it's safe. If this thing fell apart right now for, it won't fall yeah. apart, but if it did, it's not gonna fall, fall apart for anybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not gonna fall. But here we go. We can tighten this guy up now a little bit. We get our frame back to where we want. And there we go. Tighten it down. We're tightened down. We're good. Well, the next thing we want to do is get our second arm up. Yep. And since it's already secure, this, this is what we do. We get this Now you've got arm. two hands to work with. Exactly. Because you don't have to hold the rig anymore. And you're safe. So the point of this arm is purely for support. It's not gonna bear the entire weight of the rig. It's gonna keep it from tweaking and moving. It's, yeah. it's basically, it's, it's like balance. Insurance and balance, yeah. yeah. And see how we're getting things nice and close together, making it nice and clean. Yeah. Cause you may have a number of photographers who are putting remotes in the same spot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any kind of uh, big game, horse race, horse race in particular, you're going to have a row of this. So you want to take up, you want to be the good photographer citizen and take up as little space as you, as you only what you need. Correct. So what we do is we keep, keep things kind of loose. We get it nice and close to where we want it to be. Keep it a little loose. And we just kind of adjust it till we get to exactly where we want it to be. Yeah. Which this will work. And we get down here into the quarter 20 screw in the bottom of our camera body. Now we're in. And we just kind of adjust it to kind of make it as small yeah. and low profile as we can. Now, right now, from this angle, it might look kind of wide. It might look like we're taking up a lot of space, but in reality, no one's gonna go behind you. No one's gonna put a camera behind right, you. Right, right, right. So 99% of the time in most events. They're all gonna be pointing the same direction, so they'll all be parallel. So a lot of times on a rail, you'll get maybe six inches. That's how much space you'll get. Mm -hmm. So if you, you kind of have, it's almost like a long skinny piece of real estate. You can put up what, you, you can put what you need in that small area. Yeah. And so now, in this small area, we're very well contained. Yeah. 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 So now a lot of other cameras could be put here, whether mm -hmm. by us or by another photographer. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so how are we gonna fire this camera, which is gonna be maybe hundreds of feet away from us? Uh, in this case, we're gonna use Pocket Wizard Radio. Uh, again, this is a kind of an industry standard. Uh, there are other radios out there. I'm not that familiar, but I know there are. Pocket Wizard makes a uh, whole line of different units in different price ranges. This is their Multimax. I think they now have a Multimax 2. This is what, uh, what you wanna call a transceiver. It will both, you can set it to transmit, you can set it to receive. Um, either way, you need to. Yeah, so what we're using again is another super clamp. But we're gonna use these, uh, this is called an isolation post, which is really just a... Piece of plastic. Piece of plastic. With a couple of screws. That's screw. the right size yeah. to put inside of a super clamp with a quarter 20 thread to screw on the back of the radio. That's all it is. Very simple. But what we're also gonna do, because anything up here is a safety hazard, and right. it, potential safety hazard, so we're going to use another safety cable on the radio. And that's as simple as a dedicated safety cable with a key ring through the radio. I mean, this radio looks pretty small, but uh, from 100 feet up, uh, it would uh, it would sting. It, it would really sting. would. So we'll get the radio on. And another, you know, another quick little note on the safety cables is, this is a long cable, as you can see. This is about yeah. three feet long. You don't want to just take three feet and leave it dangling. Because no. now if this thing falls. It's going to fall away. It's going to fall as, at least that far. And then it's going to start swinging, which it could create more, you know, there's more potential. More problems. problems. Yeah. So what you want to do is always remove slack. And when you're doing this, when you're wrapping these cables around the apparatus, you want to take the slack up, but you want to make sure that you're actually wrapping the safety cable around. Because when you start doing this with this heavy gauge cable, sometimes it's, yeah. You think you're wrapping around it when you're really not that's actually right. wrapping around right. the cord. Right. So there we go. So that's now safe. 
So our rig is safe. The last piece of the puzzle technically is the wiring from the radio to the camera. To the camera. So we're going to use the pre-release cable again. Pre-release cable. Uh, this is a, these cables are camera specific. Uh, the little switch box there keeps your camera from going to sleep. So your camera's going to be on all the time. Even if your camera's asleep and you push the button, eventually it'll fire, but you're going, you may miss that moment that you were going for. So this means the camera will instantly re respond when you trigger it from wherever you are. And something to also remember along with that is when the switch is on, it's the same as having your, your finger on the shutter release and pressing it halfway down, which is, you know, turning your meter on your camera. This switch is the same as taking your finger and sticking it halfway down right, right. on the shutter release. Right. So if your camera is set to front button autofocus right here, having this switch on is going to make your camera constantly autofocus. So it's something to remember. A trick that a lot of us use is we use back, what's called back button. Rear back, button. Rear button, back, sorry, <laughs> back button rear autofocus, button, rear button auto, autofocus. autofocus, which is using the, th th your thumb button essentially on the back of the camera to autofocus and taking that responsibility away from the shutter release. Um, but either, either way, uh, you want to turn the autofocus off on the lens. Yes, and so when we get to that, when we start, you know, focusing our camera, we're going to tape that down. Yeah. Now something we should have mentioned earlier when we're framing our camera, we're assuming, you know, I would already set it at 70 millimeters and that's really easy to remember, but let's say I had set it at 135 where it could go left or right and tweak mm -hmm. it. You'd want to tape that down immediately. We haven't done it yet because we were intending to have a 70 millimeter shot, which we don't need to, you know, really worry about locking it down immediately. But that's something to remember. As soon as you frame it, maybe you don't autofocus it while you're, you know, getting it set up. I'm sorry, you don't set your focus, but you want to make sure that you tape down your zoom. So we're yeah, along, along with your focus and your aperture. Anything that can move that will change your picture, you want to tape down. So here we're setting this up and we make sure Camera port. it's working. So everything's, you know, we've tested it all out. Now this is set up. All we really have to do now is just get our focus set. Uh, set our framing down. and focus. Yeah, double check our framing, get it all right, locked down right. and test it and walk away. So we will do our focusing now and this is where always having your tape, tape, tape. is very handy. Yeah. Now um, there's sort of uh, different photographers think different ways about how they want to frame on a remote. Uh, it's very important that you have some awareness, obviously first pre-visualize the shot, but also of the athletes you're shooting and kind of what they do and where they're going to be. So you've got that and you have your frame. Some people just stick right in tight with that. Some people go way out wide. I'm in the middle. I like to think about what I want and then I like to pull back a little bit because I don't want to cut off an arm. I don't want to cut off a leg. I don't want to lose the ball. So I just want a little more room because sports, as a friend of mine, my former boss Steve Fine says, is messy. Yes. So we're going to have our tape ready. You always, it's easiest to take a bunch of pieces, have them ready to go yeah. right here so yeah. you have to keep fumbling with your Drolla tape. And what I like to do, you know, every photographer kind of tests things differently. The way I like to do it is, uh, is have random pieces of tape at different points around the focus ring and the zoom ring. Okay. So then if, if one piece falls off. Right, right, no, good point, good point. Some photographers like to have one big long piece that for everything, you know, it's, just, it's preference. Yeah. It's what works for you. So I'm just gonna kind of put a bunch of different pieces around but nothing's set yet. From there, we would double check our frame. We want to be at 70 earlier, so we get back to 70. We can make some fine adjustments. So this, uh, when, you're, when you're using a double setup like this with a magic arm and a ball head, you'd always want to um, work backwards. So you'd always want to loosen your magic arm first. Yeah, and then your ball head, because that's your main exactly. movement. So you want to be able to move the camera, tighten it down on the, on the ball head, and then crank the magic arm to support it in that position. Yeah. And another thing to remember with the magic arm is you're never going to tighten it down really tight, because what's happening is you're creating tension between this mount here on the lens and the camera body. And some of it is okay, that's fine, but if you really crank down this magic arm, it's going to keep tightening down and you're gonna eventually tweak your lens mount. It happened, like, it, like that's happened 
It was an NBA Finals where it tweaked the lens mount just enough where the aperture couldn't close down on a lens. And it actually, no, it closed down the aperture all the way. Oh, and everything great. was at the I think it was a little dark, yeah. Everything was a little bit dark. And that was purely from, I'm not sure if it was me or another assistant, can't remember, but it was, you know. It's probably another assistant. Some, someone got a little aggressive tightening down the, uh, the second arm. So just something to remember. Um, but we'll just look through here and loosen up our, mag, our uh, ball head. Get to where we want. And generally, I keep looking through to make sure the frame doesn't change when I start tightening down the second arm. And really, this is just, it's kind of like a set screw. It's just a fine touch on it. And it's set. It's set. It's set. So now the frame's set. We're going to tape down the zoom because that's really just for the framing. So we have two points of contact right here with the tape. It's not moving at all. And our last thing we're going to do is get focused here. Now, you're focusing a remote. You're focusing on a point. Um, you've got to figure out where that point is. If you're, say, doing an overhead in basketball, um, about eight feet works really well for, for NBA and, and college, maybe a little lower for high school or, or the women's game. Uh, but so you've got that point. And your lens is usually pretty much wide open. But at, at any kind of distance, you're going to have a little room. You're going to have a little room. It's called depth of field. So when you're all set, when you're all done, you're going to have somebody move through that area, go to your focal point and then move through and you're going to shoot a sequence. You're going to hit that motor drive as fast as it's, as fast as it's going. And then you can look at those pictures and you get an idea of how much wiggle room you have yeah, in, in the frame. The sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and going back to focusing, a, a really helpful tool is to use a focusing card. And this is kind of an art in itself of you know, they can be pretty funny. They can be, you know, it's generally a big card. We've used FedEx boxes. I was going to say FedEx boxes. We use that a lot. Um, yeah. yeah the, the envelopes uh, Sports Illustrated used to give us to ship film that have big letters. And so so I'm up here, Jordan's down on, on the basketball court, and he's holding that up. And that you can really get. It's a lot easier than just trying to focus on someone's face. Again, though, the trick in something, say, like gymnastics or, or some more free form sport is figuring out where the athlete you want to shoot, yeah. where they're going to be in their routine and how how high they're going to be and finding that spot. And then you have your assistant holding that and bing, you're in focus, you lock it down. Yes. Turn off the autofocus on the lens. So we get it to where we want it, which is right there. We're nice and sharp. And from there, we stay looking through to make sure focus doesn't move as we tape it down. As we tape down because yeah. when you're dealing with such precise tolerances, just peeling that tape down can move that, yeah. that focus ring just enough to make the picture unusable. So it's something to remember, and after it's taped down, we're gonna double check it again. And that's when we're gonna do our, our test with the depth of field. We'll have our, our uh, assistant walk through We'll review it on the back of the camera. Use that digital review to your advantage. Yeah. We do it all the time. Even a lot of times we take the card or we transmit it, you know, using our network down to a big computer screen. Do, yeah, where you can we really see it. We yeah. events so we can see every pixel and make sure yeah. that it's sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, and another, another way to do it. Um, but once our uh, focus is set, we're gonna make sure we're turned off on our lens, so we're gonna set it to so manual focus. Turning off the autofocus, yeah. So now it can't move. Then another trick is to tape up all those buttons, especially yeah. when these cameras are out in you know, seemingly public places at events. You just kinda of wanna remove temptation from yeah. people walking by or something. To just like start beers. poking around in yeah. there. Yeah, what does this do? Yeah, we've now, had that happen before oh, yeah. at games. Yeah. Specifically, I remember up Denver Pepsi Center for some yeah. basketball. Yeah. The, uh, it's in Seattle and in in back in the kingdom when they had yeah. to. Sometimes you actually have to put a camera on a railing right in front of the crowd. Um, that's a hard thing to get permission to do. But if you do it, now you're you're entering a whole new world of who's around your camera and what are they going to do. Yes, um, we've had people sit in front of cameras for entire events. We've you know you lose yeah. cameras. Yeah. You get someone come up and spill a beer on it. You get someone who gets adventurous and wants to see what television yeah, that, channel this camera right for right and right you get all kinds of stuff that happens to them so if you just remove opportunity remove temptation curiosity. so yeah. another thing i like to do is tape up a viewfinder so then no one gets the idea there's nothing to, to see it. nothing to see and that's pretty much 
Yeah, yeah, you that is. There you've got, okay, let's just. You uh, want to test it before you leave it. Right, right. There you go. Bada boom. And, uh, you know, you'll get down, if you're down in the court or out in the field or whatever, you know, you're going to keep testing it and you're going to try and see if, if the red light's going on. And there's a lot to just making sure as much as you can that everything's working mm -hmm. right up to game time when you can't really access it anymore. And you've got to think, you've got to bring yourself back to thinking about shooting the pictures that you're there to shoot on the floor. Anything you get with the remote, that's gravy. Mm -hmm. It could be a great picture. It could be the picture, but you can't count on that you've got to go with what you've got uh, in your hands so yeah I think this is uh, this is pretty much a good demonstration of how you set up a remote uh, we'll have more in our series on remote cameras uh, stay tuned stick with the channel watch learn and subscribe thanks a lot